meeting up here in uh, Mississippi, in Oxford, Mississippi, with Brock Smith. He's got this incredible uh, collection of um, axe heads, spears, and many other points. Uh, but it's, it's one or two we really want to look at. One of them's not here today, so we're going to kind of get a chance to look at that hopefully in a few days, or even up in New England. Um, but uh, there's a few. Clovis points here, which uh, he's just pointed out to me. So, hello, Brock. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so, what have we got here then? Yeah, this this would be an example of a of a Clovis point. Um, of course, it's got the fluting on the one side, and it's got the basal grinding that's typical of the the Clovis points. Uh, here's another point that's from that same time period, Paleo. That would be a, a Beaver Lake point. What sort of dates you think? Uh, most of those are considered twelve to fourteen thousand, I think now. So. Um, That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, yeah. do, do you find them in mo most places in the country now, Clovis? Points? Most places have at least a few instances of them. Uh, they're more heavily concentrated usually around the Tennessee River area. Okay. Um, but they do find them pretty much in every state, at least a few. And what have we got back here? You pointed these out to me. Yeah, these are, um, this would be a, a spade. That one's from Humphreys County, Tennessee. This would be another a spade or a flake silt probably used like as a digging tool same here you can tell that one's has been used so much the polish has yes. almost smooth the flakes totally off of it well wow, okay mm -hmm. well, that looks pretty big that one in the middle it is I think it's about 13 and a half inches is that is that larger than normal that's one of the larger ones you'll see I mean there are some a little larger but generally on average they're about that size or smaller so here we have one of the large access this is not the largest one is it apparently yeah this is actually the smaller of the two but um, it's still pretty hefty at 14 and a half pounds. Uh, That's still quite a, a, still a big one, yeah. Having to go with that mm -hmm. is going to wear you down. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so you can just see the size of it compared to my hand. It doesn't look that big, but it's, it's sort of beefy. It's thick. Mm -hmm. That's going to... Well, that is quite a beast. He's quite got a something, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's, you're not going to be just wielding that in a. I'm not going to be doing that. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> have, you, have you tried? I, I, no. Uh. -uh. I couldn't imagine having it hafted, you know, to a with a handle and. So that was found in which county is that? That'd be Calhoun Ca County. Calhoun County, Illinois. Illinois. So it was worth checking if there's any mounds there. Right. Uh, most notably with any. Um, giant skeletons Correct. reportedly yeah. uncovered. And you may look at this, it, part of the label is gone, so I'm not sure what, but if there's some site with HUB as the first part of the name, that could be... 1904. Uh, and found. 1904 is when it was found. So, mm -hmm. so we need to check, check if any, any that fits with any of the stuff we've got mm -hmm. on the artifacts um, found in that particular area. So this other one that's not here, which yeah. we're, we're going to see at some point. Yeah, we'll have it to you soon. Tell me about that one. Uh, that one is actually... Oh, roughly twice the size of this one. Uh, okay. And it's, this one appears to be possibly ceremonial in use just because it's so finely polished, but the other one has heavy signs of use, uh, lots of wear on the back end like it was used as a, as a hammer. Really? Uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, um, and, and, and all we know is that that was probably found in the probably same area. Probably found in the same area as that one. Yeah, uh, roughly but, 1904. But it doesn't have a label, but okay. so it was kind of the records of it were lost, but... It, it has been in that same collection for probably 40 years. So okay. it, it most likely came from the same kind. It, it seems like it's genuine if it's been around for 40 right. years. Oh, so yeah. they're, yeah. not, they're not going to carve it out. Exactly. I try to fool someone with that, are they? That's, uh -huh. uh, well, okay, that is something. God. Giant artifact. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice one. So we're the authors of Giants on Record. And in this book, myself and Jim Vieira, one of the chapters is called Curious Artifacts. And we specifically look at some giant axes um, as part of our research, which we feature in here. And we have one in our possession now. This is actually from a collector in Mississippi, a friend of ours now called Brock Smith. I met him a few months ago, and he showed me uh, this 15 or 14 and a half pound axe, which is very impressive. And that one and this one, which is this one's over twice the size of that one, was found in Cayuga County in Illinois in a mound in 1904. Thank God he's actually sent us this so we can examine it ourselves. Um, it's made of, it looks like it's made of granite and it's over 33 pounds. And so this is one mighty 
artifact that could prove the existence of giants. <laughs> you, got, you got it there, Jim. Okay, I got it, I got it. So this is just incredible. What do you make of this as a like, stonemason? I mean, if you're going to even create something like this, let alone use it, I mean, this is like virtually impossible, really, isn't it? To like Well, to, to wield it, yes. You, you can uh, certainly make it. Um, you know, the, the, you find these all around the mound sites in the U.S., but you find them all around the world. Uh, a couple of years ago, Oxford scientists in South Africa, they found four giant stone axes similar in size to this, mixed with 10,000 normal-sized artifacts. And the question is, are these ceremonial objects, or are they wielded by an enormously huge person? So, I can't wield this um, myself. I'm a fake tough guy. I love millions of pounds of stone in my career and it's just out of the range of, of, of a normal human to lift. I mean, it's just it's not, it's not to uh, swing or to, yeah. So it begs the question, is it, you know, well, well, I would say that what's interesting is that so many of these accounts have giant skeletons reported found with giant implements. Even in the Smithsonian Ethnology reports, um, you, fi you find it over and over again. So, um, an orthodox archaeologist would say this is a ceremonial object and I would say well all around the world um, cultures have made these oversized artifacts along with normal sized artifacts and is that a coincidence? Um, it's a good question. Let me see. 13 inches. Okay. And about 7 wide. That's a bit more than that. From there to there. That's 8. 13 by 8. So that's like 8 there. And what's the what's the width of the actual holding bit? So we're talking like 6.5 there. Okay. And what's the actual, can you just measure this bit here? So we're talking like almost uh, an inch and three quarters just for the width of that. So that would have been quite a bit of hemp or rope going around that. That's quite a sturdy object, isn't it? Not to be messed with on a Challenge a guy coming after you with one of those in his hand. I mean, what, one of the things uh, in some of the accounts we feature in the book, the giant skeletons are also found with other, other objects of like a warrior, like um, weapons and other things. So there are suggestions that these could even be war axes and these were used in battle to kind of swing them at your enemy as you're chasing them down. And just imagine a nine foot gentleman with double rows of teeth and an <laughs> axe this size coming after you. It would be quite something. So they could have been war, uh, war objects, um, war pieces, or they could have been ceremonial. I think this is what most people are thinking now. But there is wear on this one. And some of the other ones we've seen, we've looked at, and we feature in the book have got extreme wear. So they were being used for something. We, we do see signs of wear just on the front yeah. here and also mostly on the back. So there is suggestions oh, that it was used as like a hammer stone. You pound other rocks to break up rocks. Um, but that doesn't also, make sense though, you know. No, but just... that, that's, what, that's what I was talking with Brock about because you can't understand why this damage is here. But here as well, you do see little kind of indents and like broken parts where it's being kind of used. So I'm not sure if this is ceremonial. I mean, I'm just not sure about that, but it is a fascinating piece. Yeah. And um, this is just one of many we're now looking at. We've got in touch with some other collectors. There's a guy called Steve Cannon, obviously Brock Smith and some of his friends through Artifact Addiction Facebook page. They've been uh, sharing any artifacts that are in private collections. And so we hope there's more. If you know of any, please get in touch mm -hmm. with us. We'd love to hear about it because we're putting together an article and we'll feature it in a forthcoming book uh, looking at these giant artifacts, most notably in North America, but also around the world. As Jim said, there's examples in many different parts of the world. In England, you have the great ore mines where great hammers were found. Mm -hmm. um, you have other ones from Kent. Morocco, South Africa, yeah. So the, list, the list goes on. Yeah. It's just, and so like, we're just absolutely compelled by this to actually have a potential a weapon or an artifact that was once in the possession of the giants we write mm -hmm. about extensively in our book giants on record yeah the odd thing is that so many native um, tribes have the same oral history about <clears throat> like a late pleistocene pre-ice age race of giants essentially and i know um you know there's not a lot of anthropological evidence for that but they they really swear up and down that that was the case they they talked about battling malevolent 
giants, just like uh, in the Bible lands, you know, the, the uh, there are so many quotes in the Bible about giants. It's just the oddest thing that you would find such a, uh, just a sweeping testimony around the world from indigenous peoples, religious texts, the great mystics, the early explorers who encountered live giants from Virginia to Patagonia. You know, there is a lot of, of uh, kind of tangential proof, but not the smoking gun yet. So, you know, we, we think it's a fascinating subject and we don't know what it exactly means, but um, uh, we do know that there are anthropological mysteries out there, like the Denisovans uh, being identified in 2007 in a cave in Siberia, the hobbits, uh, three foot tall hominids found in uh, Indonesia, and the oral history of the Indonesian people also talk about the Ibu Gogo, these little people that existed and was thought to be some silly folktale, but now it's been identified anthropologically. In the United States, the native tribes all speak of the same, have spoken of the same kind of um, idea of little people, Menahuni on Hawaii, and we have all these giant accounts. Yes. King Kamehameha was supposed to be like uh, seven foot eight. He unified all the peoples in Hawaii. On and on and on. It's the strangest thing. Whatever you turn, there's freaking <laughs> giant accounts, whatever it means. Uh, whether it's the Aleutian Islands, Catalina Island, Hawaii, Mexico, you know, and hopefully we'll be able to unravel this mystery. Also, you may notice on here, if you can see that, there's actually a price tag. And so, this <coughs> is for sale. This is Brock Smith's. Uh, he's the seller. Uh, we'd love it if this would end up in a museum and it would be on display. So, if anybody's interested in purchasing it, they can either buy it for us, <laughs> we don't mind, um, or you can contact us or Brock Smith. But it's artifacts like this we want to really keep somehow public um, if it's in our possession if we, if we become the owners of it we would you know tour it around with us we take it to all our lectures but to me to Jim this is just one of these priceless pieces that may show evidence of the giants we've been writing about for the last few years and feature yes. in our in our book giants on record I'm sure there's an Illuminati freak out there with a couple of 10 foot skeletons in his basement and this would really go well with that collection so uh, the, the bidding is starting right now <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we recommend you know you read the book and tell us what you think and give us uh, feedback you know on this uh, controversial topic once again, we find it, it's a, a fascinating, interesting um, subject, and we have no, uh, we're not coming from uh, a place of a preconceived notion. We're just are trying to figure out a mystery, like a couple uh, detectives, and this is another compelling piece.